on that. Call this January uh, 16th meeting of the DRB to order. Um, I'm filling in as the chair of the meeting tonight. Uh, Sharon is out. Um, and I will um, start by introducing the board members here. We have uh, Kevin O'Connell. Present. And Alex. Present. And Jean. Hi, Jean Leon. Present. Uh, myself, Rob Goodwin. That's four. We have a quorum. Um, turn over to Meredith for the remote meeting procedures uh, spiel. Ready. Okay. So let's get this going. Okay. So so, for any members of the public who are viewing tonight's Development Review Board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion using the Zoom platform. You can either um, type this link into your web browser and it will bring you right on into the meeting. I'll just push a little button and let you in. Um, alternatively, if you want to use your phone, you can dial this phone number and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. And again, I'll let you into the meeting. Um, both of these options will let you ask questions and hear what's going on. The Zoom link will also give you the ability to see everything that we do on share screen um, and let us see you if you so choose. Um, if anyone is having problems accessing tonight's meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. And um, please note that if you do sign in, we ask that you keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. If anyone calls in using strictly the phone option, you can use star six to mute or unmute. Um, since all we have on right now is Orca Media and members. I'm going to skip over some of the other other details um, and just note that for the members that in the event I get emails from the public that people are trying to log in um, and they can't get into the meeting, we will have to continue it to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Um, all right. So, as you can see, I'm here as the chair this evening. Yeah. Uh, Glad to see that we have a quorum to keep things moving. Um, no other major announcements other than uh, I hear that uh, maybe the next meeting, uh, February 5th, uh, we will resume uh, these board members attending in person in City Hall. Um, so that's exciting. Has not happened since the uh, July floods. Um, and um, with that, I will um, accept a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Kevin, second by Alex to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, we have an agenda. And it looks like we have Brian Jones now joining us. Brian, are you there? Hey, Rob. Hey, everybody. How you doing, Brian? Um, Hey, Brian, before we got on, there was a little bit of discussion about um, whether to proceed or not to proceed with the 31 College Street application. Um, it's a pretty straightforward uh, amendment to an application, though the applicant is not um, present. Kevin indicated that uh, uh, we have in the past approved applications, a rare occurrence, uh, without the applicant present. Um, so I guess uh, maybe we can just discuss that a little bit more detail how board members feel about uh, continuing with 31 College Street um, or not. Um, or it would be helpful to Meredith to give the overview of it um, to sort of explain the simplicity and the limited scope of it. Um, and then we can sort of decide. That sounds yeah. good. Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll do this and it's not like opening the hearing just in case you want to yep. postpone it. Um, um, so 31 College Street was previously approved by the Development Review Board. Um, and so the, the prior application, the original application, was for a change of use um, at the Crowley Center building. 
on the BCFA campus. That's the more modern building. Um, and the change of use was to be converted. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, the change of use was to um, convert the the upstairs to sort of a shared space and the basement to um, personal and professional services. Um, and am I doing this one right? I was talking about the parking. Yep. Uh, yep. No, I'm just sorry. The library was that one. The 31 was just the personal and professional professional services. It's still the modern building, but um, it was just going to be for um, like holistic health practices, oh, yeah. stuff like that. So, but the reason it went to the DRB was because of there's no parking on that parcel itself, and so they needed to get permission from the DRB to use what was then VCFA parking in that big lot behind that stretch of buildings. And um, at the time, the uh, VCFA representative was at the public hearing and the applicant was at the public hearing. And so the board's condition of, of you've got to get a shared parking agreement that's signed um, and final to the zoning administrator within 90 days of the board's decision, everybody thought that was reasonable. And then in all the mixing and, and dealing and everything of real estate deals, it didn't actually, everything didn't get closed and they didn't have a condo association document finalized within that 90 day period. So they missed that deadline. So they never got the permit. They got the DRB approval, but never got the permit issued because I never saw that document until they came back. It's all signed. It's in that packet. It's the condo declaration that has a um, unlimited from time um, ability to use the necessary eight parking spaces within the condo association in that same location um, behind the adjacent buildings in that big parking lot. Um, they'll, they'll have a like a deeded right almost to use those parking spaces as part of the condo declaration. Um, so ultimately the condo declaration could get terminated if the whole condo association sort of splits apart um but otherwise there's no deadline and if that were to happen basically the that sort of voids the the permit approvals and so we would have to deal with finding parking um some other way um but there's you know it fits all the key points that were part of the need for a shared parking agreement um the only thing it missed is that 90-day window and so i suggested to the applicant that they come to the drb to just get that one condition amended on their on the decision, right? There's no permit issued, so it's not that like they're revisiting and asking for a new permit or asking for an amendment to the permit. It's just an amendment to that decision. If we had just said before the permit is issued, you have to bring in that agreement, I could have just issued the permit as soon as the condo declaration was signed. Right. Well, that's pretty clear. Sorry, that was a long explanation for something that's pretty simple. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, yeah. So the condo association agreement is in force. Yeah, early. I mean we. And, yeah, that's it. It got recorded. Right. The um. So the the declaration that you that's in that packet that's been recorded. Um. The the new um like condo plat the condo association mm -hmm. plat so that that condominium association has been formed and is a legal entity now. Yeah. Okay, so so it's just a, just removing the time constraint on the uh, on the permit as as it's been uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah acted on acted on to this point. Yeah, it's changing basically within ninety days of this decision to prior to permit issuance. Yeah, right. That's I have, I have no I have no problem with uh, going ahead with this. Neither do I. Okay, sounds like we've got consensus here. That's three of the five for moving forward. Are there any objections to that? No. Okay. Well, um, I'd like to welcome like a motion. Here, this discussion was, was, was quite enough. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> myself needing any more information uh you know i've read the application here 
Um, does anyone have any further specific questions? There it is. But since, I, since I officially, since I said at the beginning that was not me opening the hearing, you might want to do an official like, we're opening the hearing, just to, since you don't have somebody to talk to. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have affirmatively decided we are going to proceed with the review of 31 College Street um, and open the hearing on this matter. Um, I welcome any discussion on 31 College Street or any questions that anyone may have to Meredith. Meredith answered my questions, and, and I think the discussion has been uh, pretty clear and presented properly. Yeah. Um, I'd like to welcome a motion, if that's okay. To amend this board's May 23rd, 2023 decision approving application number Z2023-0028. So that the condition one is amended to read prior to permit issuance, the applicant shall provide the zoning administrator with signed agreement or deed memorializing the shared parking agreement, granting 31 College Street the right to use at least eight parking spaces on the Alumnix parcel for a minimum period of 20 years. Motion by Gene. Any second? Second. Motion by Gene, second by Kevin. Uh, we have any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Seeing no discussion, we'll proceed to a roll call vote. Um, Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Alex? Yes. Gene? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Rob, myself votes yes. Uh, that is unanimously approved. Thank you. Normally, this is the point where we thank the uh, applicant for his, the presentation and so forth. So, <laughs> <laughs> play the music. Right. <laughs> uh, okay. And I mean, the minutes for the last meeting, we've got, let's see, three of the required four. Okay, let's just maybe postponing it. Um, not that we need to, but it's fine. We can postpone. It's it's tradition. Doesn't hurt anything to postpone it. No. Right. <clears throat> um okay. Uh, other business, I believe. Uh, our next meeting will be February 5th, 2024. Uh, that is a Monday. First Monday <laughs> in a while. Uh, and um, I think, uh, yeah, it will be in person. How do folks feel about that? That'll that'll be town meeting day as well. No, uh, no, March. no, 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 that's March. March. That's March. March. That's March. I'm, ju I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, there's, there's, woo, that would be bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. As I think about it, yes, indeed. But uh, I saw, you know, the fourth, the first. Oh, don't, don't ask me how I arrived at that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, March, March 5th, I think, is town meeting day yeah, because we've been good. asked by, yep. No, we'll we'll be having our March meeting, first March meeting, the day before town meeting day, um, and then uh, so I'll have to actually talk to the city clerk because they're going to be trying to prep things for voting. I think mm -hmm. um, so. We might have to go remote or find space like in the senior center or something for that March fourth meeting. Um, Is the city clerk uh, office open? Is, is but now, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's just it's the 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 key thing is that the the first floor of City Hall, um, the front area where the city clerks and the city managers' offices are, that's relatively untouched. Behind that next set of double doors to get back to where Memorial Chambers and City Council Chambers were, yeah. um, that whole hallway has been stripped pretty bare. Um, and uh, uh, mostly like the flooring is still all taken out, but that space is usable. But generally the like 
just general public we don't want going through there. But right. the biggest problem is the ADA accessibility. So the elevator mm -hmm. has not been replaced yet. Um, so that back door isn't necessarily easy to get to get in and out of. We're not we're encouraging everybody to come in through the front. Um, mm -hmm. And without an elevator, you know, none of the building is ADA accessible right now. Um, so, you know, we'll be having, we can have our meetings in there, but if we get a call where somebody needs um, an ADA accessible space, I'll have to work something out where they have a separate, you know, Zoom link up somewhere in another building or something um, mm -hmm. with somebody to be with them because uh, we just, we just don't have that you know zoom is going to be our ada option that's what they the lawyers have decided for for council meetings um okay. is sufficient for them um so we're still it's still going to be a little little work around -y seeming but council chambers was pretty much untouched by the flood it's just until recently council chambers and memorial room is where we had shoved everything that was dry and recovered from all the other offices that got hmm. thrown out of the basement where are you uh where, where is planning and development uh, uh, working now? Uh, so we are in the community room of the police department. So it's oh, a small yeah. room about the size of most people's maybe dining room or living room. Right. So, yeah, um, so there's familiar with that space. Yeah. So there's yeah. five of us in here. Wow. Um, so if you want to come see us, feel free. But there's no private conversations anymore. <laughs> right. Right. That's that's been pretty well the case for quite for a while now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're here. So, so yeah, so starting the fifth, um, we'll be back in council chambers. We'll be doing the full on zoom or media, um, there to, to handle tech stuff. We'll be back to doing that, which will be great. Um, we do have an application. We just actually sent out the public hearing notice for that today. Um, for the fifth. So just one application on that night. Um, about requesting a fence height exemption for a, a privacy fence. Um, so it's not, not anything big and complicated, which is great. Um, and I think that's that. I don't think I had any other news. Pretty lean agenda this time. It's the season, Jen. January and February often are kind of yeah. kind of chill, which is okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know of several potential things kind of in the works. Um, some people may be waiting to see what zoning oh. changes get approved in February. Right. I was just gonna. I was just gonna mention that there's a. I thought I thought a really thoughtful uh, analysis by Phil Dot in mm -hmm. the bridge, and. Uh, tell me what you thought of that, uh, Meredith. Or anybody I actually else haven't. Can... I haven't read that one yet. No, either. Um, I'll have to take a peek. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's written. It's written in very you know generic terms, so I think pretty much anybody would uh, be able to understand it without it falling into uh, you know development and zoning uh, jargonese. <laughs> they get to be taken up by city council, but they're this month. This month, uh, February. February. Yeah. February. So there, there's. If you go to, um, if you look at the city manager's report at the end, they have those hearing dates. Um, and I don't. The once the public hearing notice is sent for that, um, you will actually be getting staff reports that analyze applications under both the current regs and the proposed new regs um, because they have to, that's just sort of the fun little thing they make us do. Um, and sorry, I'm just going real quick. I think that's going to get, that may get released this week. Uh, I think they have to get that out really, really soon to make the deadline um, for that notice um yeah. because they have to go through the public whole public hearing notice timing um so once that goes out any new applications that come in have to qualify under under the new regs to actually get approved um and so there's there's a bunch of changes in there there's some increased density in different places um there's 
some changes to um, how congregate living versus you know your your traditional dwelling units are dealt with so that they're dealt with in a more equitable way um and i i think take take a read through um you know once that public hearing notice goes out i'll let everybody but he know because um, Mike Miller, our planning director, will probably do a summary of the changes. That's sort of a condensed version. But I'll also look up that that article by Phil Dodd and maybe circulate that around to people um, so that you can see that as well. But I think there'll be some good changes in here. There's also a complete rewrite of the demolition provision. Um, so hopefully that will make everybody happy um, that tries to take a, a considered approach to demolition historic structures and um, how we deal with those in a different way than we have been. Oh. All righty. Go back, get back to shoveling. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, oh, why, I, that's, why, I wasn't gonna, oh, that's why I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> uh, I would gladly entertain a motion to adjourn this evening. So moved. Motion by Alex to adjourn. Second by Second. Kevin. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Motion passes. See you all in February. <laughs>